Hi, intrepid viewers, and welcome to any new trendsetters around the world who have discovered this channel. I'm Dr. Lena, bringing you a sociology sort of look at what's going on. And this reading is about August. So we're going to have a look week by week what to expect in August. So happy face, happy face, happy face. Isn't the energy at the moment fully amazing? This, this wonderful wave. And as I said at the end of July's reading, women celebrating. And I was thinking at the time, <laughs> what is there to celebrate? But there it was. This is, I think, going to be a massive mobilisation of women. And when I say that, I also want to give a big shout out to all the decent men out there who are also concerned by all these issues and they have partners and daughters and nieces and granddaughters and cousins and they don't want to see this barbaric nonsense go on any longer. So it's just absolutely thrilling. Wow. So we're still in the honeymoon. We're still in the honeymoon. But it feels different, doesn't it? It so feels different. And I was so worried about J.D. Vance being picked. Needn't have been worried. He's an abject disaster. He's managed to offend everybody. And the cat lady comments, of course, bring back the pussy hats. Ah, oh, I would give anything, America, to see 40 million pussy hats out there. I, I think... Rabbit. But on top of that, he's talking in these bizarre ways about people who are childless and saying people with families should have extra votes, he says vaguely. Now, in a democracy, he's, he's talking like it's vouchers at a sausage sizzle. Oh, you've got three kids, we'll give you extra vouchers. It's gobsmacking. So let's just launch in here to week one, August, August, let's have a look. Week one. <laughs> well, where are we now? I'm on the 30th of July because I'm ahead of you guys. Australia is very progressive. No, just joking, different time zone. I'm already on Tuesday. The point I'm making is as we go into the first week of August here, these cards to me are talking generally about the GOP and the panic they must be in. Okay. So they're feeling really defensive. Three of Wands. Now, Three of Wands traditionally is waiting for your ships to come in. Uh, it's like they're looking for deals and trying to shore up um, donations and this sort of thing. Meanwhile, Kamala is killing it in terms of donations. I'm sure you all know the stats, you know, like it's hundreds of millions and just amazing. I don't know about hundreds of millions, but it's at least 88 million and it's going up. They're now going back one by one to all their right-wing donors and going, oh, yeah. Why I say that, it's right next door to the Ten of Pentacles. So this is big money and intergenerational money. So they're going to start hitting up the voters, their voters, GOP voters, MAGA voters again for money. And for some reason, these people are prepared to take $20 that they can't afford and give it to billionaires. You can't save people from themselves, can you? Look, I'll finish these cards for week one, then I'll have a digression. They sense the loss. 
they sense the loss. This is the wine spilling out of the cups, which could be, you know, uh, the MAGA outflow. They're not in a happy space. And they're evaluating how to deal with it. And to be frank, they, they haven't got a clue. So I find those cards interesting, but they didn't really answer the question, what's going to happen on week one? I'm going to pull an extra couple of cards for other things. Like that's the backdrop, if you like, to week one. I want to know a bit more nitty gritty. What can we expect in week one of August? Let's just go a little deeper here. Week one, August. Oh, it's continuing the theme. <laughs> Look, one shouldn't smirk and laugh at the distress of others. But you know what? There's sort of this eight-year pent-up frustration here where everything seemed to go right for the Yeti, as he's referred to on this channel. The Teflon Don, everything, he got away with everything. Note I'm using past tense. He got away, not gets away. He got away with so much and it was so distressing. And now very quickly there's this reverse. So it's following on. Obviously we need to look at why this is all GOP. They are a hostage to their own decisions. They were the ones that fated and courted and protected the Yeti and now they're stuck. They can get out, they can shimmy out of the bonds and take off the blindfold, how symbolic. May not. Plod, plod, plod. They're just going to go. But some are having a dark night of the soul in what I would call a productive way ultimately. I think this could be GOP women, right? This is GOP women going, oh, my God, I've been a Republican all my life, but do I really want to go back to 1674? Maybe I don't. So they're really thinking about that. Okay. About time someone started thinking on that side of the fence. The brain has not been engaged. And I actually get this stuff on a deep level because I grew up in a state in Australia called Queensland, which is colloquially known as the Deep North as a play on the Deep South in the US, a redneck backwater. And we had our Trump, like, who kept getting in. You know. And this man could not put a sentence together. He was totally corrupt. But what he was really good at was poisoning the well and making people feel special by being Queenslanders. So it's like, we'll show those Southerners. This was the mentality, you know, and I grew up with that. So I understand that people worshipped this guy, even though he cut their throats at every opportunity and ripped them off. And it took them years to work it out, you know. So let's have a look at week two. Sorry about the meandering. If you're a new person, that's part of the deal with this channel. Some people watch it just for the digressions. So if it's driving you crazy, move right along because you're going to get more of it. Okay. Now, here we go. Here we go. This is week two. Oh, that's nice. When is the Dem convention? This last card, I think, is to do with the anointing of Kamala. I digress already. You know how Trump always, um, well, he calls her Kamala and then mispronounces it because that's what eight-year-olds do. I think she needs to start, and all the Dems need to start referring to him as Donald. This is Mary Trump's trick. She ref It's her uncle and she refers to him as Donald. And using the first name rather than the whole name or the title, 
In fact, turn it back on him. Oh, what's Donald doing this week? Donald's policies are hopeless. Donald, Donald, Donald. Okay, week two, back to this. There is still some juggling to be done, right? This could be, it's like this has moved to the Dems now. It's refining their message. The other thing that's happening that I think is fantastic, we've seen more of the second tier, very smart Dems, uh, you know, Pete Buttigieg and all of them, the fantastic lineup they've got at that second tier of Dems. We've seen more of them in the last week than we have in the previous four years. It's fantastic. So they're refining their message because they know they're still on choppy waters in the sense you've still got to pull this off, but they're working out how to get their balance to go forward. Kamala and everyone else is perfectly capable of defending their position. This is coming from a position of strength and being agile. She is extremely agile. And I would suggest she's more intellectually agile, socially friendly and stuff than she's ever been through her life. She, this is her time. I'm such a late in life convert to Kamala. And she does it all with a smile. You know, the relief is palpable. But this is being prepared for anything is the point. And you need to be because lots is coming. This could also imply, I know California is dealing with full-on extreme wildfires and stuff. I think this has a weather feel to it. I think there could be multiple significant weather events in week two. And like I said, this is the anointing. And then she's up and ready. Wow. Wow. Now let's put those cards back, week three. Now, while I'm shuffling, I saw a quote during the week, and I've seen it before, years ago, and I think this needs to be out there more. Right. Okay, bear with me. The This is from a viewer, but I have I heard it, and, and I think we need to spread it far and wide. US practices socialism for the wealthy and harsh capitalism for the poor. So what that means is if you talk about universal health coverage, oh, socialism, like it's bad, like it's bad for the nation's people to have health care, okay, and they hide behind the S word, and yet Big companies get subsidised for doing filthy energy, for, for taking risks on things, public-private partnerships. They get the huge deals to, to build things. And same in Australia, we subsidise the coal industry and then say, oh, well, we can't really move full-time to renewables because coal, you know, I mean, please spare me, you know. The modern coal mine only employs like a few hundred people, not like the old days where it would be thousands of people. They've got automated trucks, automatic industries, so, and we pay them to make a profit. And this is the same in the US, right? So I think the word, the buzzwords need to be corporate welfare and socialism for the wealthy and start planting the seed. Okay, week three. Okay, let's have a look. Week three. Oh, tower event for somebody. Okay, so. Oh, dare to hope, dare to dream. Oh, my God. Could be the Yeti. Could be Elon Musk. Now, we all know Trump is actually a bino, billionaire in name only, so this might be misleading because he's always been able to juggle money and get more money from Daddy till Daddy died, you know. But nonetheless, he lives the life 
of the King of Pentacles. And here's the tower. I think, okay, August week three, I think this is when there's a realisation about one of the legal cases, a major one, instead of him getting all the breaks. You know, what happened? Letitia James was on the brink of repossessing properties, remember, in New York, and then it went to another predictable appeal and then it, you know, sat in a cul-de-sac till we all forgot about it, and so it goes on. I think this is something, it's too early for his actual sentencing in New York, but I think it's something major legal financial loss. Could be true social tanking, like really tanking. It's been doing the drip. It might actually fall into the cellar. Okay, Knight of Swords. So I think this is the youth vote, week three. Now, this election, it's really important. It's all about turnout and the youth vote is necessary for obvious reasons, it's numbers, but to, we know from sociology and other things, if young people vote early, they tend to keep voting. If they miss voting in their late teens and 20s, they become non-voters. I think this is a rising up. I'm getting a bit of a Taylor Swift vibe here. I think, yeah, this is youth galloping forward. Like the more who register, the more register. You know how it is. It's like that's how things work both ways. You know, the Trump is looking at ice melting in a glass and this is the youth coming forward. And they want a better deal. They want to live in a safer, cleaner country than their grandparents. And at the moment, this is the first time in modern history, not just the US, Australia, everywhere else, youth, and by youth, I look from my age, 30s young. So I'm saying 18 to 30, um, are struggling more than their parents and their grandparents did. Housing is unaffordable. They can't afford to rent or buy. Right. Jobs are not secure anymore. No one has a permanent job. They're in the gig economy. So then you can't plan. And then you put off having kids and then you lose your vote. But that's another story for another day. They want that and they deserve that. Go the youth. Wow, wow, wow. Now, week four, let's have a look here. While I'm shuffling, who's Kamala going to pick for VP? I don't think it's going to be Pete Buttigieg, much as I love him. Wouldn't he be a perfect Secretary of State? I think it'd be bliss. Um, I think it's going to come down to, is it Tim Walsh? Or Mark Kelly, I'm just leaning a bit towards those two and slightly more towards Mark Kelly. Okay, so let's have a look at week four. But it almost doesn't matter because all of a sudden there's so much talent in the wings of the Dems and it actually needed a changing of the guard to let the young ones rise. And they're impressive. You know, every time Buttigieg goes on Fox or something, the anchor person ends up, I think, secretly voting Democrat. I mean, they get phone calls for people. Who is that lovely young man? Put them out there. Meet people where they are. Do we have to tell them everything? But I think the Dems are instinctively doing a fantastic job. The whole party is so revitalised. The nation is revitalised. It's really important. Okay, so week four, guys. Week four. Oh, now we're getting into the big cards. The <laughs> ah. Okay, I've only pulled four cards and three are majors. So for those who don't know, Tarot has 78 cards, 
22 are the big guns and 56 are the fine print. This has three of the big guns. So mark my words, week four of August is going to be epic. Epic. Okay, good. All right. This is newness, a new cycle. This is the invigoration we've been talking about. It's also a, a leap of faith generally. It's putting faith back in the system and you can't actually put a prize on it, a price on it and you can't buy it and you can't bottle it. But that's what the reinvigorated Dems are doing is they've bought the Republic back to life. I don't think that's an overstatement, right? And they got this just before this too. And they're constantly manipulating and fine-tuning in a good way how to get the message across to this group, that group, that group, that group. Did you see during the week, apart from the Zoom call where Kamala got 160,000 women on a Zoom call, we've all heard about the villages in Florida. Now, we know snowbirders go to Florida. Florida is where people go to die in comfort in the sun. It's been notoriously conservative in these communities. And the villages, which is the most conservative, hosted an event for Carmel. You live long enough, you see it all. Huh? So they, they need to keep doing this. They Again, that agile thing, they need to be fast on their feet and they are. Finding that balance, these are both about balance. Right? Both these cards are about balance. So it's finding out what to talk about, what gets people in, what to avoid until later. It's still a delicate dance, how to handle um, the disaffected GOP voters. Do you go after them or do you wait and see if they come to you? There's endless strategic decisions they have to make and it's about getting the balance right. Week four, and I'll pull some more cards because you should never end a reading on the tower, but it's come up twice in August. So there's going to be big, memorable events in August. So this is week four, the end of August, another now, this could be something to do with France, could be something to do with the Olympics. You know, there could be something heavy about that this might be global rather than just US. Um, I'll just put this in now while it floated through my brain. I think France is like 70% nuclear dependent for its energy, some very high percentage. You could look up the actual number, but it's quite high. They've had these nuclear reactors since the 50s. And why nuclear power is not cheap is because it costs billions to decommission a reactor and to build another one. And they've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And old reactors have accidents. So I'm just saying it flew into my mind there. In other terms, this could be a storm surge somewhere significant and or it could be political. It could even be we might see Trump get replaced at some point because we know he will won't resign because otherwise his sorry flabby ass goes to jail. It could actually be involuntary. It could actually, but that could be further out, closer to November as the stress builds. But something massive is going to happen in week four. So, guys, it's always good spending time with you. And let me know in the comments what you're thinking about. I'm so enjoying the comments now because everyone is so up compared with the last four years, six years, right? The light. The light. So, blessed be. Go and meow that vote. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao.